You are listening to The Scope, a podcast dedicated to having open conversations about healthcare topics relevant to our patients and community. Today, we're talking about healthy living and how it relates to wound care. Let's get started. Today, our guest is Candy Sadler, an adult geriatric nurse practitioner at Phelps Health. Welcome to our show today, Candy. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm stoked to have you here. I know that we've had you on a couple of different things um, within our marketing team, and I'm really excited to sit down and talk to you about health and wellness because that's really at the core of what we do at Phelps Health, right? Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved at Phelps Health. What's, what's your role here? My role here as adult geriatric nurse practitioner, I work in the wound clinic. We have a wound and ostomy clinic here. Um, I have worked there for a little over 11 years now, and I grew up in this community. I went to Rolla High School. My parents still live here, and I uh, have strong roots in this community. So you have a really interesting story about how you even got involved in wound care. Let's talk about that because I think it's really cool. My mom had an open wound when I was a teenager, like an open abdominal wound and an ostomy. Um, So I learned a lot about that as a young person and I don't really have like a, you know, it's an open wound gross factor. (laughs) So um, I thought it was super cool. I thought Mm -hmm. uh, when I was hanging out with her in the hospital, I got to kind of go in, I got to see them like do the wound care dressing, change the ostomy pouch and I got to kind of learn about that. And it was really interesting to me. I just thought it was fascinating. I just thought everyone looked so amazing. They knew what their jobs were. They were all, it just, it was thrilling to me as a kid. And I basically, from that point on, I knew what I wanted to do. You're like, I need to do this. Yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. So let's talk about what you do. You have a wound ostomy and cotton certification. What does that mean? So I uh, was certified back in 2004 at wound ostomy and continence. Wound care um, is basically, you know, any wound that just won't heal by regular means um, it can get stuck in the inflammatory phase. And typically we talk about that at three months if it's still not healed. It just kind of depends on the person. It can be sooner if you have a lot of debilitating conditions and people often do. But um, ostomies are, you know, when you have to reroute your bowel um, typically and you wear a pouch and we just teach people how to take care of that. Um, any complications from that because sometimes there are and then continence is um, any type of bowel and bladder continence issues which I don't do too much with but I can and typically it's more continence issue with urostomies and things like that if I do get involved with that which sounds like a lot (laughs) yes it's super fun though I I like it because there's always something different Mm -hmm. so how does wound care you know all these things that you were talking about How does it relate to healthy living? Because it seems like a lot of patients that may come in, are they past the point of living a healthy life or do you help get them back on track? Mostly. I like to think of us as like a a small portion of a patient's life. We're kind of an ancillary. You don't have us forever. So we really, every single appointment, we want to make sure that we're helping their primary care doctors out and especially for diabetic patients, their podiatrists, by teaching them nutrition, good healthy eating, good habits, how do you heal a wound? How do you heal a wound is similar to like in bodybuilding, which we were talking about a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, You're breaking down your muscle tissue and you're rebuilding it to create bigger muscles and and, um, being able to lift heavier weights. It's the same thing because you have with wound care, you have broken down tissue and you need to rebuild it to heal. Mm -hmm. And it's nutrition. It very much comes down to nutrition, what you're eating. If you're not giving the good nutrition to your body, you're not going to heal. So whenever we talk about healthy living, which you were just mentioning, what parts of nutrition play a role in our health? Like, do they completely change their diet? Are there parts of their diet that they need to incorporate, like carbs? Do carbs help somebody heal? Yes. Um, Carbs, uh, protein, and fats are extremely important for all wound healing and lifestyle and everything. Especially protein. A lot of people are not quite getting enough protein. Um, And it's pretty uncommon knowledge that as you age, you actually need to increase your protein. I know. Yeah, Um, I didn't know that. You could see the shock on my face. (laughs) So you actually, you would think that a younger person would need more protein. It's actually the opposite. So in order to combat what we call age-related sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss, 
um, increasing your protein and making sure you're getting enough of that for wound healing, muscle building as you age. And you can build muscle as you age and a lot of people think, well, you know, I'm just getting older and stuff and, you know, my metabolism is slowing down. What's really slowing down is you're losing muscle mass and that's what it is. And so in order to combat that, in order to continue keeping your muscle mass and even building in some cases, you would need to make sure your diet is adequate. So that's preventable then? Muscle loss as you age is preventable? Somewhat preventable, mm -hmm. certainly not completely, mm -hmm. but um, you can certainly slow it down. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, if you're really starting out, like brand new into it, you kind of have a little bit of a leeway in being able to like lose weight, lose body fat, and gain muscle kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. Once you're fairly well trained, you kind of lose that and it kind of levels out. But newly trained individuals can actually increase their muscle mass and reduce their body fat mm -hmm. levels and, and do pretty much a changing their whole um, body composition. Now what about like sugar or fruit? Because a lot of people, um, I've heard people who are older, even people who are really into like fad diets, mm -hmm. they'll say, well I can't have sugar, I can't have fruit because it has sugar in it. Mm -hmm. How does that relate to wound care? So wound care is what we like to do in wound care is I'm trying to teach people how to not only just heal a wound but like have a healthier life throughout life and not taking any any type of food groups completely out so ask anyone we don't want to take food groups out we want to be able to eat all of it um, especially fruits and vegetables they have lots and lots of really healthy nutrition you know vitamins and minerals that's extremely important really what it is is the calories in so you can actually gain weight on broccoli <laughs> you can <laughs> gain body fat eating broccoli it's going to be really hard to do mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of it but you can um, so just making sure that your calories are in the correct amount for your own metabolism your own mm -hmm. uh, height and weight and stuff like that um, but then being able to disperse those throughout the you know you can have carbs you can have fats you can have as long as your protein is good and you're not eating excessive calories, that's perfect. And fruits and vegetables are wonderful parts of your carbohydrates and um, it, even putting like a little bit of olive oil on it or eating it with like a steak for instance, to certainly eat that too. Mm -hmm. um, those are really great. Yeah, um, I'm thinking of like a steak and grapefruit salad, like how yummy is that? Also, it's yes. been really hot here, so. <laughs> yes, like anything like that, you know, a lot of people eat, you know, with like their chicken salads with, their, you know, their strawberries on it. You mm -hmm. can, you know, have all of that stuff. It's certainly working with your doctor. There are some special considerations for people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to discount that. Some people do have to be on specialty diets, but it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, certainly asking about that. So once we assume that somebody's um, lifestyle is in check, right, and, and mm -hmm. they're eating all the right foods, they're getting enough protein in their diet, uh, you'd mentioned this before, it's kind of called like you're, you're building the bricks and mortar, like this mm -hmm. foundation. Yes. So once they've established that, what can they do to become more active? Because a lot of these people may not be active or they may not even know where to start. So I became active with my friends. So we decided to start working out and a friend of mine was like, hey, let's go do this. And we started like a, an at-home workout when I was 30 and we just kept getting stronger and it worked out really nice. It was fun. And then it just kind of progressed from there. What I really like, and the studies do show this, um, when you're accountable to someone, you do things that you like to do. Um, I had a very fun story, a patient of mine, he was in his late 80s early 90s and he uh, came to the wound clinic for some other actual reason like it was you know a chronic condition that was genetic versus and mm -hmm. he would play racquetball as a retired person with his friend three days a week and they would just go have fun and play racquetball and that is you know a very good example of like healthy exercise but not really thinking of it as exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're just going out and you're having fun, right? Yeah. It's like going on a, on a walk with your friends in the park yes. or something like that, just getting outside. Walking your dog, getting outside, going to a gym together with your spouse mm -hmm. is wonderful. Um, and there are tons of programs out there and there are really inexpensive gyms to join if you don't like the outside walking because mm -hmm. it's hot or whatever. <laughs> you know, Or you need to, for instance, like some of my patients, they need to hang on. Mm -hmm. And so being able to like hold on or even do bikes 
and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there are options for them, which is what's really great, yes. right? Yes. What about vitamins? Are vitamins important as a part of a supplement to a diet and a lifestyle? I particularly like a multivitamin. Um, I would leave that certainly up to the patient's primary care doctor, but it is really hard to get enough vitamins and minerals in your diet. I don't. I take a multivitamin because it's just filling in the gaps for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, talking to your doctor about which ones are best for you because there are certain men's, women's, and age-related ones that are better for people for sure. Yeah, don't just go grab one off the yeah. shelf because I would grab Flintstones gummies, let's be honest. <laughs> I, I actually love those. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. Yeah, they are. <laughs> now, how about water? If somebody comes into the wound care, just you know, regardless in general for overall everyday health, is water optimal to wound care whenever it comes to healing? Yes, everybody needs to be hydrated, everyone, including my mm -hmm. nurses, uh, me, we all need to be mm -hmm. hydrated. Um, and I pretty much am fairly loose on this part. Drinking water is great if you like to put like meal or flavorings in it, or even people put lemon in it, you know, whatever. I don't really, I'm not super picky with that unless I have uh, people uh, that are talking. using like Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, so I had a really fun example of that. A patient of mine, um, we were discussing, you know, weight loss and weight loss tips. You know, in every visit we do discuss this with our patients and talk about nutrition. And um, I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, I've cut out sweet tea. Oh, okay, well, what are you drinking now? Kool-Aid. <laughs> How many cups of sugar does your wife put in the Kool-Aid? About the same as the sweet tea. So those are like you know, series, you know, conversations to have. And I know that, you know, people don't think about that if you're, you know, if you're drinking your calories, that is more of my, you know, concern and my issue. What are people drinking? Are they drinking lots of soda? Can we switch to like a lower calorie options and discussing things like that? What about the difference between regular soda and diet soda? Does diet soda play an effect, because it doesn't have any calories, right? right? But does it play an effect in um, wound care and how quickly somebody heals? I have not seen any mm -hmm. evidence or anything like that that you know diet soda is typically, you know, I prefer a diet soda because mm -hmm. it has less calories and so you've got less long-term potential for weight gain. Mm -hmm. um, if a person likes it, fine. If they don't, it is counted as fluid because fluid levels are what's really important. And I think I was looking at a statistic the other day. It said something about getting, you know, a normal diet. We get about 20% of our fluid just from our food. So it's really fluid levels and it's dehydration. And if you're one of those people that's like, hey, I just am never really thirsty and I just have to kind of make myself drink, that's fine. Um, I'm kind of like that. I just have to make sure that I'm drinking enough and I kind of monitor it. But a lot of people are thirsty and they can just go pretty much by thirst and and they do okay with it. So it just kind of is very case by case dependent. And I do like uh, some people, hey, I don't want to drink Diet Coke. Okay, don't don't drink Diet Coke, don't drink Diet Pepsi, don't drink Diet anything. <laughs> just make sure that if you're, you know, drinking a lot of like calorie option, you know, higher calorie drinks, that you do fit that into your total calorie count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So something you mentioned that I want to go back to is you said, you and your nurses um, really make sure that whenever people are in your clinic that they see you guys really kind of practicing what you preach. Let's talk about that. What does that look like if I'm a patient and I walk into your clinic? What am I going to see? So all my nurses are really like, we actually don't really let reps bring in, you know, bad food. We don't want them bringing in like donuts or unhealthy stuff. We are pretty much like, you know, stick to fairly well healthy stuff, you know, vegetables, protein. Um, we get stuff like that, um, but we all pretty much stick to a healthy diet when we're together. Um, sometimes we'll have like Nacho Friday, <laughs> but um, pretty much when we're together we do that. I did a bodybuilding competition with the second one I did. Um, I actually did it with one of my nurses um, and another one of my nurses and I work out all the time together. We, uh, another one of my nurses, she does, she has little kids so she can't go to a gym. So she does at-home workouts on the video, on video, and she even has her kids kind of jump around and do them with mm -hmm. her. So um, that's pretty, pretty fun. So we all kind of do it. We all kind of like live this kind of healthy lifestyle. Mostly, we want our patients to see that you can, you know, have kids, have a job, and still be active and and have fun because it's really actually just fun for us. Yeah, you don't have to give up 
the active part of your lifestyle as you add things into your life, right? right? That that should continue to be a part of your life yes. regardless of where you're at. I like it. I on the weekends it gives us a little bit more leeway to, you know, go out and have pizza with our kids and things like that and still pretty much keep our calorie counts and our our body weight and our, you know, fitness and our health kind mm -hmm. of on track. Yeah, I think that's amazing. So something else whenever you talk about eating healthy, I think a lot of the question that people have and a lot of the pushback you get is, it's so expensive. I can't afford this. I can't afford to go to the gym. I can't afford to go and, you know, buy this expensive chicken and do this whole meal planning. Yes. What do you say to people? So that's a really good question and it can be expensive. Convenience is expensive. So if you can't afford convenience, it can be a little harder. I did my first bodybuilding cut very inexpensive and it is harder because you do have to put in the effort to buy the big bags of rice have it planned out i bought the larger inexpensive um, chicken the great value ones mm -hmm. in the bag they do have a little bit higher fat content so you have to reduce your fat somewhere else um, it can be done big bags of spinach the frozen so you you can do it i did it um, it's convenience that you pay for so um, I do feel like people can put their money into things of convenience and then save other places. Fruits and vegetables can be grown, can be canned, can be, you know, things like that can be done. Um, my parents have a garden and they give me tomatoes. It's fabulous. I don't have to buy them, but I can buy and I can buy frozen spinach, which is certainly cheaper. Um, it can be done. Um, it is so much more convenient though to have a steamable rice packet, but you don't have to. Yeah, it's just whatever works best for you, right? Yes. So do you walk patients through that process if they decide, I, okay, I want to change my lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Do you walk them through, okay, here's your diet plan? I don't actually do that. I do leave that more up to their um, primary the care doctor and the, so the diabetes education sees a lot of my patients too. Um, and their primary care doctors and um, nurse practitioners mm -hmm. do a lot of that part. What I like to do is, because we're adjunctive in the wound clinic, I like to give them like real sustainable things, mm -hmm. like examples. Like I tell my patients, so have you ever tried like non-fat Greek yogurt and you could put a little bit of flavored protein powder in that, mix it up and have that for a snack. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having you know, eggs and bacon every morning. If you're going to scramble them, you can get egg whites in a carton and add a little extra really non-fat protein in your eggs for the morning mm -hmm. and just give them a little bit of like specific examples on food because I do think that it is a little bit helpful because we do have a little bit more time than their primary care doctors do mm -hmm. um, with each patient during our visits, my nurses and I do, so we can do their dressing change and discuss like healthy eating options, which is why it's really helpful for us to be doing it because we can then teach it. Yeah, absolutely. So we have just a couple of minutes. So I want to ask you one more question before okay. we wrap up. Um, what can somebody expect from an initial visit to a wound care clinic? Pretty much across the board in all wound care clinics, we do our initial assessment. We find out why you have this wound. What are the factors? And typically it's, you know, a lot, we see a lot of diabetes. And so we do want to make sure their blood sugars are under control. They're working with their doctor to get that taken care of and getting that under control. And then when we find out the why of the wound, then we try to fix that either socially, functionally, or um, health-wise. Great. Fantastic. Candy, thank you so much for being here today. You are a wealth of knowledge and Phelps Health is very lucky to have you. Thank you. It's luck I'm lucky to be here. <laughs> I am. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> to learn more about the Phelps Health Wound Center, call 573-426-2214. Thank you so much for tuning into The Scope. If you like this show and would like to learn more, check out phelpshealth.org.